Hello, I'm Kate Bradbury and for this Get Dorset Buzzing film I'm going to talk about solitary bees. Now solitary bees are different from bumblebees and honeybees. Bumblebees and honeybees are known as social bees and they have a queen and lots of workers and the queen lays all the eggs in the nest and then the workers they go out and they gather the pollen and nectar and they bring it back to the nest to feed the grubs in the nest. Solitary bees don't have this structure. You have males and females, the, they mate in spring or early summer and then the female lays eggs and they both die and the young actually never meet the parents who created them. And some solitary bees, there are about 240 species in the UK, will use bee hotels and this is my bee hotel which I've bought from home. So the two main species that use bee hotels are red mason bees and leafcutter bees. I haven't had red mason bees using my bee hotel this year but I have had leafcutter bees and you can see here the nests which they've made along these rows here. So what the bees do is they mate, the male and females mate and then the female will come into a bee hotel and she will choose which cell she wants to use and then she will lay an egg right at the back and then she'll go and get pollen and nectar from the plants in your garden maybe teasels or knapweeds or cornflowers or any of those things and, um, and then she'll make this little cake of pollen and nectar and she'll leave this cake of pollen and nectar with the egg at the back of the cell and then if she's a red mason bee she will make seal the nest up with mud and if she's a leaf cutter bee she'll seal the nest with leaves. Now leaf cutter bees they don't use any old leaf to make their nest they can be quite fussy and one thing you can do in your garden if you want to encourage leaf cutter bees to use your bee hotel is to grow plants that we know they use to make their nests. They use a variety of different roses, they use wisteria, they use birch, there are lists online that you can have a look at to see if they'll use the plants already growing in your garden. But one plant they really love to use is roses, but not all roses. They like the roses that have got quite thin floppy leaves so they can cut them easily. Some roses have very glossy thick leaves. This is one of my favourite uh, leaf cutter friendly roses. It's called Francis E. Lester and it has single open blooms which leafcutters and other species of bee will use to gather pollen and nectar. It bears hips in autumn for birds. It de develops into a nice bushy climber anyway so it can create a nice breeding habitat for birds but my favourite thing about it is that it's got really good leaves for leafcutter bees. So at home I grow Francis E. Lester next to my bee hotel and the leafcutter bees come and use the leaves, they cut them, they cut the leaves and they cut the pieces of leaf and then they take them, they roll them up and then they carry them beneath their bodies into the bee hotel. Um, and all along here, so this leafcutter bee has made, um, this is one leafcutter bee that's made these sort of two and a half cells here and she's just laid eggs all along and so there's probably about 20 eggs. And so the eggs hatch into grubs, the grubs eat the cake of pollen and nectar that their mother has left for them and then they pupate into an adult bee and then they spend the rest of the summer in the bee hotel just sort of pupating into a bee and then hibernating as an adult bee and then the bees come out of the nest exactly a year later than when they were laid as eggs. So red mason bee season is typically between April and June and leafcutter bee season is typically between June and August. So you get red mason bees first and then you get leafcutter bees. So that's my bee hotel. And this is one I bought, which has got viewing panels, which I really like, so you can see what's going in, on inside. But you don't have to buy one, you could make one. And this one here is handmade using bamboo stems. And all you need to do is cut, cut bamboo stems to size. About 16 centimetres in length is a really good size. Um, keep them in a box which is nice and snug so there are no drafts going on. Make sure it's got a nice strong back on it. And the diameter of the holes needs to be, for red mason and leafcutter bees, between about 10 and 12 millimetres in diameter. But if you go smaller then you get other different types of solitary bee using the hotel as well, which is quite exciting. Place your bee hotel about one to two metres high up off the ground in the sunniest part of the garden. Morning sun is better than afternoon sun. And one of the best things about um, attracting solitary bees is that they won't sting you. They, the females do have a sting, but they won't sting you. They just don't sting, so it's a very child-friendly thing to do. Now, just before we go, 
There's a couple of other things you can do for bees in spring and summer. One of them is to make a little mud bath. So just as you might make a mud bath for house martins in summer, it's really helpful if you can make a mud bath for red mason bees in spring, especially if there's a very dry spring. So just mix up some soil and, and water. It's a really good thing you can do with the kids and just leave that close to the bee hotel so that they can take the mud and they can go into the bee hotel and use it to seal their nests. And another thing that's really good, you might notice in hot, dry summers, is that bees, um, they come to use your bird bath. However, sometimes they can get stuck in the bird bath and drown. So all you need to do, just get a stone, pop it in your bird bath, and suddenly you've created a habitat that's really good for birds and bees. And for more on the Get Dorset Buzzing campaign, visit the Dorset Wildlife Trust website.